Well, let's go. All the way in the back. All the way in the back. Let's go. Oh wait, are you going first or I'm going first? I'll go. I'll go. Okay. <laughs> you introduce yourself, I'll introduce myself. Uh, Alright. Hi, my name's Gabriel Cashett, I'm 18. I'm Simon Cashett and I'm also 18. We're from Australia, but we were born in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And we ship it out of Navy Boot Camp. <laughs> we get asked everywhere we go, yes, we are twins. Uh, we're not identical though. Paternal. Or is it paternal? Paternal. Alright, doesn't matter. I guess you've always got that best friend next to you. I guess we've never really had that, so it's going to be different once we get assigned to a boat or if we're not in the same company in boot camp. So, my name, my country, my country's name. Um, I haven't been practicing as much as I should, that's for sure. I'm not going to lie about that. All over the world, around or around. You're the really world. butchering it here. It, it was a long waiting period, but then this past month has just gone by um, so quickly that. Yeah, it's unbelievable. No turning back now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Got that doctor handwriting. Rachel Jones. Then what else did you say? You could put like a personal message, like a quick word of wisdom for everyone to read. What would I put? Okay. Hi, my name is Rachel. I'm 24 years old. I live in Alexandria, Virginia, and I'm getting ready to ship off to Navy boot camp. So I studied French at George Mason. Uh, I was there for four and a half years. I took a year to study abroad in France. When we were in college, I would have never expected you to go to like the military. I really appreciate the group of friends that I have made. Um, I made them at Mason as well. Not gonna cry. Not gonna cry. Yeah. Uh, Future Sailor Jones requested. Initially going in there and talking to the Navy, I was a little bit apprehensive. Once I walked into the recruiting station that this is something that I, I really did want to do. Sailor, what is your first general order? Petty officer, my first general order is to take charge of this post and all government property in view, petty officer. Mm. No. <laughs> I expect it to be challenging. I don't expect it to be difficult um, because thinking about how many people a year go through boot camp, it cannot be hard. Basic training was designed to actually train you, for, or break you down from who you are as an individual and lift you up as a team. You know, so you'll get that. And it'll give you direction for the rest of your career. Yeah, I remember seeing my dad come pick me up from elementary school in his uniform. And I'm just like, yep, that's my dad. Yep, she fights dad, guys. So now that I'm getting to put on that uniform, and now my youngest brother will be able to see me and think that I'm super cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's enough affection. <laughs> I think it's really cool that I get to be one of the select few who does get this honor of being able to defend our country. So I feel very proud about that. It's an adventure. Hi, I'm Luis, I'm 19 years old. I was born in El Salvador, I uh, live in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and I'm about to leave for boot camp. Uh, my favorite part of Baton Rouge, it'll be downtown. You know, me as uh, being as a creative person, I, I love taking pictures of the places of, this, of, the, of the city. But from whenever I moved to Baton Rouge, I remember I, I hear laughs and I hear people talking about me and, you know, saying that he, he's the guy that doesn't know any English and it's stuff like that. And then uh, here I am now, I'm about to join the Navy and really excited about it. So it was so quick. I, I, like, it feels like it was yesterday that I called you. <laughs> I mean, that's <laughs> Two weeks like before I got my citizenship, 
I called my recruiter off my recruiter and then like I think two weeks after I got my citizenship I got sworn in in the office so you it all oh, it was a perfect timing are you gonna be sad happy you're gonna be happy when I'm gone. Why? Because she's really proud of you. Because he's proud. I did a lot of research. Well, not a lot, but I've done some research on um, what boot camp is like. Uh, I'm not really scared about it. I um, have a mindset. I think that if I go in there thinking that I'm the best, it's gonna higher my standards of what I can actually do. I'm nervous. See, it didn't hit me back then, but now it's just starting as the time getting closer. You know, it's, it's getting. Better. They're proud. My parents are really proud about me joining the military. Um, of course, they are. They're a little bit sad that I'm leaving, but they know it's for the best of me. So that that makes up for it. And uh, I'm gonna miss you guys. We will miss you a lot. Miss you guys a lot. But you know, same like your mom. Um, feel so happy and you happy i'm happy whenever we left el salvador my my mom left all her family behind um she came here to absolutely nothing she she it was she did it all for me and and i really consider my, my parents heroes for me you know doing that the huge sacrifice of leaving the whole family behind used to give me and my brothers a better life. It's something I gotta take advantage of. You know, if, I, if I'm living in this beautiful country, I'm gonna take advantage of that. And I'm trying to do that the best way I can by joining the military. So we're gonna work all night, then we get breakfast, and then it's a whole day. Hurry up, let's go. Get on the bus. Let's go. Hurry up, move. Let's go. Get on the bus. Go. Legs, hold your straps, keep your legs inside. This aisle will stay clear so I can walk up and down the aisle. There will be no sleeping. There will be no talking. We will ride this bus in complete silence. Is that understood? Yes, sir. Is that understood? Yes. We'd like to commend you on your decision to serve this great nation and welcome you to the beginning of your journey in the United States Navy. Now, you are about to undertake a rigorous and intense training program that has prepared generations of sailors for service in the world's most powerful Navy. Whether you call it recruit training or boot camp, Make no mistake about it, it's hard. It's designed to be hard, because joining the Navy is so much more than just getting another job. When you get off the bus, you will walk with a purpose, like you mean to accomplish something tonight. Is that understood? On the hop, let's go, let's go, power up, hurry up, hurry up, let's go female, hurry up, hurry up, let's go, move fast for you. Night of arrival was just the bus and get in the building, move, move, move fast for you. Move. I'm like, what did I get myself into? So it was like one second we're on the bus, watching a little video, trying not to fall asleep. And then as soon as we get off the bus, like it's immediate screaming. No, 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 no. Um, I remember getting yelled at. That's pretty much all I can remember is just getting yelled at. Go, move, move, let's go, move down, let's go. No, stop, no, stop. Good afternoon, I'm Chief Petty Officer Jamie Kala. I'm a recruit division commander. The minute you get off the bus, there's going to be a lot of stress applied upon you. The yelling, the go, 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 go. Can you do this? Can you get that done? Um, you know, and it's up to you to basically perform under pressure. Look straight. Look straight. Welcome to the United States Navy. For the next eight weeks, you will not do a single thing on your own. 
I tell you what to do, how to do it, when to do it. Nothing that I ever tell you is a request, an option, or a suggestion. So you, you, you make it, you give you a direction and you have 0.5 seconds to pay attention to it, to the letter. So you, you can't mess up. If you mess up, then that's on you and it's really going to fall back. Then you. you will roll up your pant legs three inches up. When you are done, you will be on the tall line, standing straight, looking straight, awaiting further instruction. You have 15 seconds. Go! Go! Behind you! Behind you! Is that touching your heels? No, it's not! Fix it! Fix your love! Fix it! He said get down to the last shirt with sleeves! Maybe I wasn't loud enough. Maybe you couldn't understand me. Fix yourself now! I thought it was gonna be uh, a little bit more relaxed, but definitely isn't. A lot more intense than I did think it was gonna be. Who said to stand like that? You must love getting special attention. Huh? No, Chief. Get that attention! Now! I'm pretty sure that I said your hands will never be behind you, your hands will never be in front of you! What is your problem? Proper military bearing will be maintained 24-7 and it starts tonight. Do you understand me? Yes, Chief. I can't hear you. Do you understand yes, me? Yes, Chief! Yeah, that was the hardest for me. The, like, not even arguing the point. Just take it. Yeah. This row's gonna fall out and then that row. Let's go. Let's go fall out. You got that, so let's go. Get over here. That girl's lost in the sauce. Let's go. Let's go. Hurry up. Hurry up. Get down there. Get in the back. Get in the back. Get in the back. Sorry. Get in the back. You grab that. Oh, we found me. We got our sea bag, which was the big green duffel bag that you have to carry. You take all of your personal items off, like all of your clothing, your shoes, everything you arrived in. You put it in a box, including your cell phone, and ship it home. And then you get brand new everything from t-shirts that we're wearing to the PT clothes to sneakers. Nothing that you came with, aside from maybe a hairbrush and a few personal items, gets to stay with you. I knew that I would have to carry my own luggage, like there was no bellman service here, but I didn't expect all of my things to be that heavy. Like when I was filling it up, I was like, okay, great. This is so convenient. Everything fits in this little green bag. Wonderful. And then I had to put it on and it wasn't so wonderful. Anymore. Okay, then fix it now. Uh, I've been up since three in the morning since last night. And I don't know how I'm awake right now at this moment. And I've been on my feet and my feet are dying. So that's it. I'm exhausted. My arms feel like they're going to fall off. And it's not fun yet. I didn't even, no. I didn't I didn't even sleep at Mips. Yeah, I nearly, oh I nearly fell asleep standing. So. I am naturally standing out of tension right now. Not even trying to, but... <laughs> it's, it's definitely getting a lot tougher for recruits. Pretty sure I said you will sound off. Yes, Chief. Huh? Yes, Chief! Did I say walk back on the tow line? I didn't. Do you know where you're at? Respond! Say something! Yes, Chief. No, Chief. Maybe, Chief. What is it? Yes, Chief. Because responding is not an option. From what other people would say, and... Like how they said that they've kind of they've got a bit softer because of um, like the era that we're in, but no, I think it's still kind of the same. There is a reason for everything that we do here. We do instill that pressure. So what is it doing next to you, huh? Let me guess. You want ah no no. Now you want to fix it. Maybe had you just done the right thing the first time, you wouldn't be in this situation. Because, again, when, when you do get to the fleet, 
we want to make sure that you, you fight and you don't fold. It's nothing like boot camp. It's nothing like Navy boot camp. You are joining the United States Navy. I expect it to be hard. No, I'm not a star! No, Chief. I'm not a chief! No. I tell them all the time, this is more your Navy than it is mine. Years from now, I'm going to retire and you're going to take over my spot. And I let them know that I want to make sure I can tell my wife and kid that we're safe at night because there's tough people in the Navy and I know for sure because I put them in. Where are we going to be? Go ahead and have the speedway and cause the falls from the left. Means the left front is going to take off first. Everybody will go down the speedway in a single file line. So on. Do you understand that? Yeah, you have to get a little louder than that for me. Yeah, yeah. All right. So cause the falls from the left. That's recruit, sound off, that's recruit. Fall off, stand by. There, once we receive them, we put them in divisions. So we assign them uh, to the divisions as we need them. And then around 03.30 in the morning, once everybody goes through that entire process, then the in-processing barracks team picks them up and takes them to chow. And from there, you know, later on that, later on a few hours from there, they'll meet their recruit division. Let's go, hurry up. Super bunk. Standing front of the bunk. Yeah, I just want to get boot camp finished. <laughs> I like challenges, and I feel like this is a challenge, and I'm gonna beat it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna graduate without doubt. It's going to happen. I have a very set goal of what I'm here to do. If I have to get yelled at, I'm getting yelled at, and that's fine. But in eight weeks, I plan on being out of here. So I don't have time to fight with anyone or to get in any type of trouble or get set back because that's not what I'm here for. Just in and out and move on. Just get out of here. Yeah, just get out of here. I want to graduate. Um, like I thought it just comes with going to boot camp that you were going to graduate, but you have to earn it. Yeah, it's definitely harder than I thought it was. No, Sit up straight, eyes on me. I'm Petty Officer Sperry. I will be your lead RDC. Petty Officer 10 will be your second RDC. Petty Officer Gonzalez will be your third RDC. Together, we have eight weeks to transform you and United States sailors. You are no longer a civilian. Whatever you were before is now over. You are about to begin a journey that's gonna make you a part of the greatest naval force the world has ever known. This training will not be easy. It wasn't meant to be. You will not be coddled nor disrespected, but you will be held to a high standard. Our job as your RDCs is to turn you into basically trained sailors. Your job as recruits is to do what you're taught and give us 100% motivation. You'll all be treated the same, no matter your sex, cultural background, religion, or sexual orientation. There are no individuals in the military. We are many, but we operate as one unit. For this team to be successful, you have to work together. If you fail, the team fails. Get on your feet. Get up. Let's go. Get up. Get up. Get up. My name is Petty Officer Sperry. I'm a recruit division commander at Recruit Training Command. All divisions start off basically the same. They're, they're very scared. They don't know what what they're supposed to expect during their eight-week training. Turn your head! It's easy! Say your number! 51! 52! 53! Go! Pay attention to what Turn your head and say your number! 59! 60! 61! Pay attention! For the person in front of you to turn their freaking head so you can say your number and then you go after them. Do you understand? I'm Chief Petty Officer Stigall. I'm a recruit division commander here at Recruit Training Command Great Lakes. Processing days, that's where you're issued on your, your initial issue, Diddy issue. They have their basic medical indoctrination. So they give a series of shots. So during that week, you get a lot of shots. You get kind of everything you need to continue the rest of your training. The shots were were not fun. Hey, Jeff. We got dental work done, which we just finished today. It was long, a long, long process. 
Everything that you do is with a purpose and you do it to the best of your ability. We want to give them a shock and we let them know that, you know, you haven't even started training yet. You haven't even begun to experience exactly what we're about to subject you to. And then you start teaching them the very basics, how to stand at attention, how to salute, how to do facing movements, left face, right face, about face. Learning how to fold things, learning how to do things correctly. I gave you 15 minutes to shave and brush your teeth. We are going on 25 minutes. This is unset. Let's go! The first few days of boot camp, that's when recruits don't really know what to expect. So when you start yelling at them, you understand? Yes, buddy. You're here to get better, not to stand freaking lazy. You understand? Yes, Petty Officer. And don't stand like that. I shouldn't be repeating myself when I already trained. Some people really have a negative effect to that and they don't like being talked to like that. And then some of them understand the process and understand that that's us being on them 100% all the time is what's going to make them a better sailor in the end. You know, I don't, uh, everything they do, I don't take it personal because I realize they are training me to be a sailor. It's a lot of tough love. Um, and it's like, I know that they, us to succeed again. I know that they want us to do well. You know, they've all been through this themselves. Um, they have gone through a lot of training themselves to beat RDCs. So trying to just remember that and give them that equal amount of respect um, really helps me get through it. They've been, they've been good. Like they'll, they only really, um, again, if you're doing the right thing, they're not going to be yelling at you. 55, 56, 57, 58, 9. Then why are you here? One, two, Four, two three, zero. Four, Get across the freaking hall. All right, 68, 9. We have to yell at them a lot and get them to understand that we need them not just to react to what we're saying, but to react fast. We're gonna make it uncomfortable for them. We're gonna make it so that they are able to, one, have confidence in themselves and their abilities, um, but also be able to deal with the stress. And so that's why we create a stressful environment. That's why we keep the temp up. What did your RDCs tell you about failure? If you fail, who fails? The whole team. Your initial PFA is tomorrow. You need to understand that if you fail, you will get set back. So tomorrow is going to be a reality check for the recruits. It's going to be their baseline uh, PFA where they're going to be required to run a mile and a half, do a number amount of sit-ups and push-ups. Some won't make it, so someone's going to go home. Oh, I wanted to pass out and just sit down. <laughs> like, give me a gallon of water, let me drink it. So we were all really stressed about um, who was gonna pass and who wasn't gonna pass. Let's go, get up there. Come on, don't think about it, let's go. Come on, five more, five more, give me five. I happily that I didn't think I was able to pass it. I'm glad. So hopefully I can pass the next one with a better score. With the PFA, um, I knew I was ready. I was ready for it before coming to boot camp, but the day before I got really, really sick. Still, I felt sick during the PFA, but I just pushed because I didn't want to get separated. And so that PFA baseline is just that, it's the baseline. It's not even the actual PFA standard. And if they can't meet the baseline, then they probably need to go find something else to do. I don't give a crap if you're tired, if you think the sea bag too heavy, you came here to serve, so own up and do it. Week one of actual boot camp, they can expect to be staying up late, long hours, working at a fast pace. They're gonna be expected to pass their swim qualification and expected to march as a unit. And those are all things that we're training them from the beginning, from P days. They're gonna have to bring it together week one and make sure they're performing this task. 
So in P days, we we are loud and we are aggressive with them, but we are instructors at first. We teach it, we're teaching them everything. We take our time because come week one, then it's not, we don't have time to train every little thing over and over again. They need to learn it. So when we're telling them at first they need to pick stuff up and this is how it has to be done. Come week one, we expect that to happen. So when they start failing during week one, then they're actually held accountable for their action. Anything that you were before you came here, you wave goodbye to that. That's gone. Because as long as people in this world want to take your life because of where you live, because of where you breathe, you must be ready. And if you're not ready, we don't need you. Let's go, get up. I wake up every morning and I'm like, I'm really in Navy boot camp. Good morning. Uh, 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 quit stuttering. It doesn't feel like we're here. And it's like you go to sleep and you wake up and, and then you look around yeah, and you're like, here. Cry. Shave yet? Yes, petty officer. When? Last night, petty officer. Did you shave this morning? No, petty officer. Or within the last hour? No, petty officer. Go shave. All right, petty officer. Now we're in our permanent ship and it's a heightened amount of stress because there are so many more pairs of eyes looking at us. Oh yeah. Um, it's stressful at the moment. I'm trying to get used to it, I guess. I believe with Division 229, when we first switched from P-Days where we were coaching most of the time to week one where we were holding them accountable, it scared a few of them that they weren't gonna be able to meet the standard that we expect them to hold. Everybody on your faces, nah! <laughs> you can't act in a You ready to quit? No, you wanna quit? I can get you out of here. All recruits, when you first pick them up from basically civilians and then get them into the week one training and you start using intensive training exercises on them, they really struggle. It's mostly a mindset. When someone's in your face yelling at you, they'll have a hard time doing 10, 15 push ups and they kind of start to quit on themselves before they need to. You're quitting. You're not sweating. You're not putting any effort into it. You're just quitting. Boom! Yes, Get over here. What side of the open side your pillow go to? Left side right of the officer. So why is your pillow backward? Big dick! It's the same hit every day. You both had that hit yesterday. Only one of you fixed it. Why didn't you look at it? I didn't see it, Petty Officer. Once he makes his rack, look at it for him. It's called teamwork. Figure it out. That's been the most challenging part, is just getting along with everyone and trying to work together and putting all differences aside and understanding that we have one goal to accomplish. So some people have adjusted to that better than others. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, up, down, up. So that IT session was to show them after taps they're not allowed to argue with each other and they have to just handle things internally as a as a division. What number? Then yell it! 12! 12! Do it! Do it! That's not yelling! Yell 12! 12, petty officer. No one feels sorry for you, Calvin. No one. You want to be a part of this? You want to act like them? You're going to pay for it just like they do. But they can't bring every situation to the RDCs. And also, they can't argue with each other like they're still in high school. They need to realize that they're grown women and across all our men, and they need to handle it amongst one another. I hear one recruit knocking on my door, telling me, see me recruit so-and-so did this. Handle it amongst yourself, like grown women. You understand. When you come to boot camp, it's not just about me as an individual, it's about us as a team. They're not sure who's gonna step up and take leadership positions, who's gonna help support those leaders. So it's just a forming stage at the very beginning of boot camp where they learn how to come together more. So 1400, head on spot, same time entry, forward hold on spot. You understand? Yes, go ahead. I'm kind of learning leadership. There's a chain of command in our, in our division. 
I am a head, uh, I'm a head PO. Just I clean the head, I clean the bathrooms. I actually enjoy doing it. I actually like to keep it clean. And what I don't enjoy is people not listening to, <laughs> to what I tell. So that's why being a team comes into part. Hey, please, in the shower. swim so this is a baseline swim test and to just make sure that they have the basic skills required to uh, survive if they were to find themselves in the ocean and so we walk in and i see the platform and i was like okay that's 10 feet it's not that bad and then you get up there and you look down and i'm like whoa that's 10 feet oh and he says okay step and i kind of hesitated and before i knew it i was on the edge so once I finally got out of the pool and made my swim, I was like, okay, great. The worst part is over. And then we go to the other side and we have to jump off again. And I was like, man, why didn't they tell us this before we joined? I would have reconsidered that. But I passed. Um, but he did inform me that I needed to swim less. It doesn't look as high as it is. And it's not the fact that um, you like, I'm afraid of heights. But it's the feeling. Yeah, it's the feeling your stomach gets when you drop. You have to hold on to an inflatable boat and everybody has to get in it one by one and the water was really cold. But it was quick, it was fast and uh, I really enjoyed jumping off the tower. Yeah, that was not fun. I, I did not enjoy that. Other people said that they loved it. I, mm, I hope I don't go overboard. We started off with 79 recruits. And going through the first couple of days, you lose a lot of recruits for medical reasons, for uh, testing reasons. And a lot of times those recruits get processed back into training. So they'll continue on with another division. Boot camp's very challenging. We push the recruits to their limit and beyond what they think their limit is because when they're here at boot camp, if we can push them and push them and make them feel uncomfortable, but they keep succeeding and keep going through the mission, then those are gonna be the sailors that are out there in the fleet ready to serve once they do graduate here. And if they find out that boot camp's not for them, it's better for us to filter out the people that are gonna have an issue under pressure while they're here at boot camp before they get out there in the fleet and they need to perform. And that's the point when they decide they break. So boot camp's hard for that reason. Even though I've only been in um, boot camp for a week and some change, I can see things turning and I, I see goals that I can set for myself. It makes me a lot more sure of the decision that I made. I knew deep down inside, I really, really, really wanted to be in the service. So it made me a lot more sure and a lot more confident that this was the best decision that I could have made for myself. Whenever I was back at home, I used to judge myself a lot. I used to think, I'm not doing this right. What am I doing wrong with my life? And I don't have that feeling anymore. I, I always, I'm satisfied with what I'm going to. I'm really satisfied. Yesterday was our first day wearing the actual uniform. So when we got them and I see that my name is on my right, and it says U.S. Navy on the left. I'm just like, wow, like, I get to wear this uniform. This is so cool. It's, it's mind blowing. And it's like, wow, my name is on here and it says U.S. Navy. Like, I, I'm doing this. I'm doing it. I'm, I'm doing it. It's happening. I'm so excited for graduation. I'm just, I'm ready for it. And I'm excited for my family to see me in my uniform and for me to just get out of here. I mean, that's, that's my number one inspiration to get through this, is seeing how my parents are gonna react to it, how they're gonna feel, how they're gonna see what I change. It's making them proud. I can't wait for graduation for one reason, and, and, and I feel like it's, it's too long, it's so long away, but it's just knowing that I will make them proud.
three, four, yeah, one, two, three, four. So now that we're going into week four with Division 2 to 9, and the division as a whole is just starting to work together a lot better. Division 2 to 9, all present, all going for, sir. Very well. The standard is set, and they have to do what they can do to reach the standard, and that's helping bring them together as a team. They say that um, basic training doesn't get better, you get better. I think that's definitely true. When we first picked the division up, we can barely get them to stand still and just left or right faith. But now coming to week four training, they've been marching everywhere, every single day together since the first day we got them. Yeah, our, our progression, it's been really cool seeing it and just looking back on our PDA days and the first day that we tried to start marching and how horrible it looked. And it's kind of like the progression just happened um, right before our eyes. The transition is night and day. Every time Candace has come on, I'm always in the back screaming. You, know, you can hear my voice all the way in the front. The U.S. Navy is the best. The U.S. Navy is the best. The division has come a long way physically, but they still have a long way to go. Here at Recruit Training Command, we have physical fitness training six days a week. So about three days a week, we do some in-house physical fitness activities, which are a lot of push-ups, jumping jacks, running planes, different exercises that we can do right here in a small space to get the recruits in better shape. And then uh, four days a week, we go over to Freedom Hall where they get to run. So it's all a building block to get them up to the standard that the Navy wants them to be at prior to leaving the crew training command. Yeah, I've seen my waistline go down, which is awesome. Fitness is, is going well, you know, it, it also helps that we've been put on our faces every day. So I try to think about that when we have to do our little flow kicks and ten count cord builders. So it, it has certainly improved PC for sure. From my perspective, I do think we are good friends, Chief. In a professional standpoint, yes, Chief. Professional. Explain to me what professionalism is when you're going out of your way to talk to each other. You're talking to each other in inappropriate places. You're talking to each other when you should not be. So you tell me about professionalism. Every single day. You better it, fix your military just, bearing right now. I'm sorry, Chief. Chief. Shut up! All right, Chief. Here's the point. Conversations shouldn't be had. Good friends, not in my boot camp. Everything that you guys are doing is against good order and discipline. I'm going to ensure that whatever relationship you're trying to have here in boot camp, whether it's just good friends, social buddies, or whatever you word it, I'm going to make sure that it doesn't happen here. Do the workout correctly. Get off your knees! Get off the deck! Ah, good. Let my last chief. One, two, three. One. One, two, three. Two. Marlon Spike is a huge team evolution. Get up here, go, go, go. So if a division feels that they, they operate as a team, they get to Marlon Spike and they find out exactly what real team work is. Learning how to tie a knot and cast off the line and actually tie down the ship, I felt like was a lot more practical. Everybody has to be able to get the ship underway. And so when it comes down to line handling, when it comes down to that Marlon Spike evolution, they got to work together. Life before Marlon Spike and life after Marlon Spike was night thing. We got this, let's go! Slam it, slam it! So that was really hard, but I felt like it made us, it forced us to work together.
you all of the Palestine and I have to learn any questions that I think I'll see out there in the week. Every single sailor is a firefighter. Now, damage control training is uh, extremely important. Everybody has to know it. If they don't have the proper training, then you lose the ship. And that's one of the damage control team commanders. You do not give a shit. You, you don't really think about all the things that can happen while you're in the middle of the ocean. You know, your ship going down or being attacked, and then really all you have is each other and the skills that you learn. Yes. I am, uh, um, I'm really confident if something was wrong, you know, for example, this, uh, conference in Berkeley. This will be the best work day of boot camp, booyah. I want everybody to repeat after me, embrace the suck. You would think, okay, so is this mask really going to cover me and keep me alive? It's called confidence shaming for a reason. It gives you the confidence on the equipment of the Navy. It wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. I think on a scale of one to ten, I would have gave it like that was fine. It burns. Oh, it feel burn. Like right under my nose, it burns. But I think we sliced it a little bit more than we needed to. I just cried a lot. My eyes were watering. They're still watering. I really didn't call for it. Like it wasn't that bad as I said it was. You know what? Y'all got confidence in that gear? Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Y'all see this? Yes, that means it's a good day. Good day to be in the Navy. Who are y'all Navy? I do believe that they're doing a lot better job getting these recruits a basic knowledge of what they're gonna be expected to do once they get out to the fleet. I know when I came to boot camp nine years ago, we had a three or four day course on firefighting and then two days on line handling. And now the recruits are getting it every single week once they hit week four until the, the week they graduate. And I think that will help prepare sailors for the fleet a lot better. Since uh, the P days to now, they're they're completely different recruits. Every time we walk past um, Pearl Harbor, which is where P days was, we kind of see through the window the people in their PT and their sweatsuits, and we're like, man, that was us only a few weeks ago, and that was us looking out the window at some of our senior divs, and we we're like, man, I wish I was there, and they're marching, and they have on their uniforms and their flags, and that's so cool, and we just got here three days ago. They understand that they have to work together as a team. They understand that no one can make it through boot camp completely by themselves. That's the biggest thing and the thing that makes you most proud as an RDC is when you see them work together as a team, understand each other's weaknesses and really, really just come together. Y'all take that same thing into this kid. Well, now I have two minutes to complete as many proper push ups as you can. Are you ready? Ready up? Begin. I feel great. I really do. Like all the hard work paid off. It's at least you who's laying off my shoulder. I'm coming from battle stations. That's for sure. Battle stations are about to get the best of me right now. Take all of that. Work together as a team. Execute the mission. And the next time I see you, you'll be sailors. Who y'all neighbor? Battle stations is a crucible event. They go in as recruits 
and they come out sailors. The most nerve wracking part about going into battle stations was knowing that if we don't pass battle stations, there is no way that you will graduate. And we get to battle stations around eight, um, eight o'clock at night. Stop. All right, y'all are motivated. That's great. You need to maintain that motivation all throughout the night. You're, you're tired now. There's gonna be nothing at zero four, zero five, zero six. Gee, you couldn't do it. You couldn't do it, man. So Battle Stations is the final test before you can graduate boot camp. It is all night long, and it's basically all of the classes that you've had and all the training that you've had since you came to boot camp, just all crammed into one. We, we, try, to, we try to keep, just keep everybody in line, try to keep everybody awake, try to keep everybody as less stressed as possible. We keep everybody happy. Uh, I, mean, I think we did a good job. It's not much that I can say about Battle Station. It's just that it's very tiring. It's very it's stressful. You got to rely on your shipmates next to you to make sure that you all got through it efficiently. It made me kind of think about my job and my role um, as far as the Navy goes, it really made me appreciate how important it is for every single member on that ship to know exactly what to do and where to go and how to get things done efficiently. That way you're not just looking for that one firefighter, that one DC man to come and save the day, so to say. So I really appreciated that part and that aspect of my training because everybody needs to know that. Really, we everybody um, is just really excited that we get to graduate tomorrow. Yeah, I need you to be done, all right? And get to, get to see our family, and, and everything is done pretty much. That's that's the main thing. We're happy to be done with this. And I'm happy for all you guys as always, and everybody who finishes together. You'll hear people say boot camp is a filter, not a pump. We're supposed to evaluate these people and uh, decide whether they're sailors or not. But I will refuse to lower the standard to help someone achieve the goal that, in my opinion, is one of the greatest things you can do, and that's become a sailor. So all the recruits that do make it through my divisions, I'll be proud of and feel like I'm really helping out the fleet. Well, for the captain ceremony, I got the chills. I got the goosebumps. And um, I didn't tear I can kind of tear up a little bit. I'm not even going to lie. Um, it's, it's, it's emotional, you know. Uh, it's been a long eight weeks. All the things that we've been through. It was kind of emotional. It was nice finally being able to shake my RDC's hands and shake my fellow shipmates' hands and trade in that recruit ball cap and finally get that ball cap that's been sitting in my rack since the day we got here. So it just, it feels like a sense of accomplishment. Um, just that whole ceremony and, and switching over, it feels great. I thought coming into the Navy as someone who had already finished college and been on my own and worked on my own job that this experience wouldn't change me as much as it has. But I can, I can see the difference in it. I can see the difference the way I talk to people. It gives you so much more respect for yourself and so much more respect for other people. I don't even know if it will ever hit me. I feel like it was just, it's just a change in my life. You know, when you change, you don't really notice it, but other people do. Boot camp have made me, a, have made a product of myself that I want everybody to see. A personality that I never knew that I could have. And I'm really proud of myself. There is 1% of 
of the United States that joins the military. And to be that 1% in the Navy is a sense of pride that you carry with you. Our day-to-day -day job is a tough job. You have to be tough. That's what boot camp does. We create tough sailors so that ultimately our Navy is what the nation needs. The challenge to come up here and do this job and to make civilians into sailors, it is the hardest job I've ever had, but it's the most rewarding job I've ever had. It's, it's a feeling that you can't really explain to someone until they come up here, put the rope on and, and graduate a division. I'm really looking forward to not only what the Navy has for me, but what I can also give back to the Navy and to my country. I'm excited about being able to serve and say that I did serve, which wasn't necessarily at the top of my list when I walked into the recruiting station. Honestly, I was thinking more about, oh, I want to go to college or go back to college. I want the benefits. I want this. I want that. But after being here and after seeing how passionate that my RDCs were about being in the service and how much this means to them, it really made me redirect my attention for my reasoning of being here. I just, I want to be here. I want to make my parents proud. I want to make my RDCs proud. So I just want to go out there and give my best. And at the end of the day, whether my time ends at four years or my time ends at 30 years, I want to say that my time that I served in the Navy, I gave everything I could have given. And that was it. A first Navy boot camp. <laughs> I uh, really finished Navy boot camp. Wow. I never thought I would have said that. Yes, I am a United States sailor. It's kind of surreal. And I'm just, I'm so proud of myself. I'm proud of the journey that, uh, that I had to take to get here and all of the challenges and obstacles. It just makes this moment so much greater knowing how far I had to come to be here. I, I am a United States sailor now, and uh, I, I feel completely different. Uh, I didn't come here as a United States sailor, I'm leaving a sailor now, and it's an amazing feeling, honestly.